God's standards are so high that the natural carnal mind cannot hit. It takes the man of the spirit to utilize the things of the spirit. Manifestation awaits you after this message. Let me give you three keys tonight, very quickly within the time that I have. I came to share with you three keys that can cause any man to become in experience a sign and a wonder. Not just to produce signs and wonders, but to become a personification of this realm and this reality, a sign and a wonder that your life becomes a fulfillment of prophecy when people see you they remember everything God has said because your life becomes they can see verses being fulfilled in your life when they look at your life they can see Deuteronomy chapter 28 from verse 1 and 2 that you shall be exalted above the nations of the earth and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you they look at your life and you are like a well-watered garden your life becomes an explanation of the faithfulness of God the grace of God made manifest do you believe that please I want you to let me your attention for the next few minutes because you see I told you that according to Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 6 the Bible says that the God of our father had blessed us with all spiritual blessings 1 3 Ephesians 1 3 had blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ these are prophetic realities finished in Christ but you see the new birth gives the believer access not just experience access access does not equal possession access means that the the possibility for possession has been created are we together now if I gave you a check of a million naira um, it is safe to begin negotiations with that check if you trust me but if the person needs cash there is a technology that has to convert that check to cash are we together so you can hold a check like a piece of paper and yet you will be surprised that you will not be able to do much with it if you say I am a million naira richer you are not lying but your lack your inability to cash that check will eventually make you look like a liar so I can't call you a liar because I see a check on your hand but you are not able to make any purchases with it necessarily you see that now so access does not equal possession there are many believers in the body of Christ bragging over access and that is not wrong except that there has to be a technology of conversion to turn access to possession the Bible says the word became flesh the word became flesh there was a conversion process it became flesh then it dwelt among us as flesh then the Bible says we beheld we beheld the word became flesh the business was made manifest the favor was made manifest for as long as we keep claiming things that never find expression in our world we mock ourselves and our convictions the Christian experience was never supposed to just be believed arbitrarily. You start by believing, but you can taste and see that the Lord is good. There is an experience. Are we together now? The Bible says in Acts chapter 8, I hope we're still together. Acts chapter 8 from verse 5, it says Philip went down to Samaria and there he preached Christ unto them. And that the people gave heed with one accord, listening intently to the things that Philip spake. Why? Because they heard, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. He did not just carry grammar or language. When he said God lifts, they saw that God lifts. When he said God restore, it's important for people to see what you are saying God can do. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I and the children that the Lord has given me, we are for signs and wonders. Key number one, for every believer who means business with God, business with destiny, and you intend to become a manifestation of this prophetic word that nations men all and sundry will call you a sign and a wonder the first key is that you must have an experience with the God of the Bible now don't assume you understand what I just said please follow carefully you must have an experience with the God 
of the Bible. I would always make reference to a statement that I heard and I learned years ago. The God you know is the God you reveal to your world. You cannot reveal a lifting God when you have not encountered him as a lifting God. The God you know, the one you meet, is the one you reveal to your world. I hope you know that the God of Abraham is still the God of Isaac, is still the God of Jacob, but his revelation according to these names is not the same. No. There is what the God of Abraham alone can do that the revelation of him as the God of Isaac will not do. What Jairah would do is not what Rapha will do, although it is the same God. Are we together now? Yes. So the God that you encounter is the one you reveal to your world. If your revelation of God is weak and impotent, it is because your encounter is the same, weak and impotent. Moses said, who shall I tell Pharaoh has sent me? I cannot go and stand before Pharaoh and advocate an exodus just blindly. Let my people go. Pharaoh will say, what is the meaning of that? Where was that God for 430 years while these people were in captivity? And Moses said, the issue is not the captivity. The issue is not Pharaoh. The issue is not your people. The issue is me and you. Who shall I tell them has sent me? I assure you that life and destiny will ask you this question. Who sent you? Who sent you that you want to build the biggest business across Africa? By what audacity do you know the controlling spirits that have tied and destroyed lives? Who sent you? Life will ask you, who sent you that you intend to be the first person from your family to rise and lift up the name of Jesus Christ? Who sent you? The God you know is the one you reveal to your world. Knowing another man's God is a good starting point, but you must get to a point where he becomes your God. Paul said, but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded Is someone learning your conviction in this kingdom is a product of the depth of your encounter please listen believers many times believers do not take time to know God they just brush over and the next thing they jump to principles wanting to succeed wanting to excel it does not happen that way no time invested in knowing God is a waste no time if you have 10 days for exploits and you use nine days to know God, you were not foolish. Because the Bible says, Daniel 11 and verse 32, but the people, he never said, but everyone, the people that do know their God, they shall be capacity. Number two, they shall do exploits not talk exploits not explain exploits the people that do know their God the people that do know the lifter the people that do know the restorer the people that do know the helper you are strengthened in the place of encounters the reason why we fall off when things happen around our lives good or bad is because our encounters are not deep enough to keep us strong and so we ask god all kinds of questions there's something you know about god that you laugh at failure as it laughs at you until it leaves you will worry failure through your confidence and it will leave because there is something you know about god for instance the lord is my light and my salvation of whom shall I be afraid of? Is that in your Bible? Did you ever read in your Bible that a thousand shall fall by your side and ten thousand by your right side, but that none will hurt you with your eyes shall you see and behold the reward of the wicked? Is it in your Bible that I lay me down and I slept some three? It says I wake for the Lord sustain me. Who sustains men? The Lord. Do you believe this about God? 
you see your confidence and your audacity in life i'm not talking of bragging i'm not talking of pride i'm talking of confidence that is built on account of the god you have met let me tell you this life has a very nasty way of bullying men did you hear what i said it will use the reference of your background to bully you satan will move through systems and structures and probe you you think you can become anything you ask gideon why he was hiding life for you life can bully a warrior to hide but when he came he called him by his destiny you are a mighty man or fellow i wonder how many mighty men have been in hiding because they have not met a mighty god when you meet a mighty god you cannot be a weak man because the bible says as we behold him we are changed not into what we want into what we are beholding is someone learning now you need an encounter with god you are a man of god here you need an encounter with god a businessman an encounter with god god has called you to be a witness advancing the purposes of the kingdom I tell you life will bully you into mediocrity if you do not know God men will look at you and say you do not add up you can't be the director in that company by what parameters ah when Saul looked at David he said David I love you you're a little boy I I love you too much to allow you die a miserable death in front of Goliath and David said King you are a warrior I'm a teenager but let me tell you a story you do not know about me once upon a time whilst I was in the wilderness no Instagram no Facebook no one to snap me and let the world see while I was in that wilderness listen carefully a lion came there was no help so I learned how to depend on God a bear came there was no you I I learned from the wilderness the vanity of the help of men without God and I tore it with my bare hands in other words King you are a warrior do men have the ability to tear animals by their own strength but not when the spirit of might comes on a man he said it is that audacity that sponsors my confidence allow me to take care of Goliath and Saul now carried his armory you see what God trains you with is what you will use in battle if God trained you with prayer don't use another tool if God trained you with scripture don't use another tool are we together now if God trained you with wisdom pay attention to the tools that are used during your training process that is what will bring Goliath nothing wrong with the armory of Saul there are many believers after many years of investment with the spirit the world now begins to tell you drop your tools no prayer drop that prayer it doesn't make sense drop fasting it doesn't make sense drop the word it doesn't make sense wisdom oh no relationships not exactly drop them and before you know it you are in battle with tools you were not trained to use hmm. are we learning and David turned it to Saul and said I will use what he trained me with when he stood before Goliath Goliath said am I a dog Israel you bring this little boy I will kill him killing him is not the issue is how I would do it I mean you want me to give you a very bad memory I mean am I a dog and David kept quiet silence is not fear silence is not fear let me tell you the truth when mighty men are silent it is wisdom walking ask Jesus when they met Jesus and brought a woman who was caught in adultery you would think because sometimes knowledge without wisdom makes you talk yourself even to failure silence and he wrote on the ground maybe that's what Adam and Eve would have done if they were a little silent the Bible says even a fool when he's silent is regarded silence can create perceptions and he writes down <laughs> and then he says he who is without sin should cast the first stone 
and that was the end of it so David stands before Goliath and says Goliath who is this uncircumcised Philistine you come to me with your bows you come to me with your spheres but I come to you in a name there is a God that I met in the wilderness he's a warrior too he trains men to fight he says by you I will run through a troop and by my God, I will leap over a wall. No, you don't have that capacity to leap over a wall. You try that, you'll go to the hospital, but not when God is holding your hands. I'm saying this to someone. Listen, I want you to believe what you are hearing me say. God can help men. Did you hear what I said? God can help men. He can help ordinary men to be extraordinary. I'm telling you, God can help men. Woe betides the man who stands the way of a man God is helping. God can help men. God can help men. Maybe this is a prophetic word for someone. You have done everything in your own strength. Intellectual strength. Financial strength. Let me tell you the truth. God can help men. And help has two assignments. To make things possible and to make things easy when God comes to help you the intent behind his providing help is to make things possible and then to make things easy hallelujah an encounter with God great men in the kingdom are made on the strength of their encounters with the God of the Bible I can share with you stories stories in my own life and I'm grateful to God for the honor of the many encounters he's given me when I talk of encounters I'm not limiting it to supernatural visionary encounters the Lord appeared unto Samuel in Shiloh by his word God can appear to men by his word giving light even from scripture it doesn't always have to be a visionary out-of-body encounter not everybody may have the privilege of meeting Jesus as a person encountering angels no 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 but once you can encounter his word his word not just the letter the spirit behind it you can read every day fear not but the daylight comes from that scripture you see that it comes with a grace that empowers you to fear not that what would have made you afraid will no longer make you afraid because light has come from scripture listen to me ladies and gentlemen spend time to know God by his word don't be ignorant if you want to excel in life and destiny the God that you know the truths that you know that is what will give you confidence is what will give you audacity many years ago I read a few things in scripture and looking from hindsight now sometimes I'm tempted to laugh at myself but I was foolish enough to believe God and I was foolish enough to believe them there is nothing God has said concerning my life that I do not believe because every time you believe he gives you power to become as many as believed him he gave them there is a gift that follows believing It's called the power to become say it after me the power to become one more time the power to become what you have believed is given after you believe not before the power to become you believe that God lifts you the power to be lifted is released you believe that God is your salvation the power to become happens when you can believe him enough hallelujah you need an encounter with the God of the Bible you need an encounter God is calling you to ministry here don't rush to go and print handbills and posters no know the God of the Bible infirmities and sicknesses and curses and yokes that are upon the people you are sent to the spirits behind them will ask you who sent you it's a question if you cannot answer you will remain defeated forever 
Do you believe that? Yes. How about the business world? You may say, I'm not called into the fivefold ministry. My God, you need the revelation of God more in business, in fact, in my opinion. Because the king of Tyre, there is a spirit that sits upon that marketplace. Satan prefers a healthy church to a prosperous church. Yeah. Because he knows what the wealth of the kingdom can do in the hands of people who love Jesus. You may have heard me say in my teachings that the name of Jesus is very heavy. It takes resources to lift it high for the nations to see. Are we together? And so he comes to steal, he comes to kill, he comes to destroy. But the people that do know their God, the people that do know their God, the preachers that do know their God, the businessmen that do know their God, fountain of life, if you do know your God, the Bible says you shall be strong, capacity, strength, inner strength, emotional strength, intellectual strength, and then it says you shall do exploits.